play ball. That's right. Welcome back once again. It is time for the comics coffee table. That's right. Grab a cup of, pull up a chair, sit beside us, take a break, and let's talk about funny books, comic books, floppies, superheroes, stories, illustrated art, sequential panels. You know. The stuff that we come here and talk about every day, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Oh, the turkey's not done yet. Wow. i got to get a new timer. I hope I don't have to get a new timer. Timer. <laughs> get on that. Talk to him. Maybe you could give the timer a charge. Oh, battery's not included in my puns. Whoa. Happy Sunday. It is new release Sunday where we go over the um, the magazines, the titles, the periodicals that I've purchased at my local comic book shop this past Wednesday. Wednesday traditionally is new release day. Uh, you know, some I like to give it a couple of days to air out, you know, and perhaps, you know, just... If there's spoiling to be spoiled, then spoil away. I mean, just by Sunday, you're more of like, okay, you know, just, well, sorry. It's been a couple of days. I know. Spoilers kind of suck, huh? I hate spoilers. And, um, but they happen, huh? You get spoiled. Sometimes you inadvertently spoil other people. Oh, man, I've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. Um, hmm, an ohm game <laughs> well thank you so much for tuning in uh, we like talking about comic books we do this every day 3pm US Eastern you can catch the live chat premiere and be part of that conversation or you can continue the conversation in the comment section this comic book shop style conversation I'm usually during the week I'm reboarding Rebagging, reboxing my entire collection, and um, we just take uh, we take time to to appreciate old comic books, their condition, uh, what they could be worth today in the speculators market, um, the art, the panels, the advertisements, the paper quality, you know where where they stood in history when they were being written. You know, how does it compare to now? Does it hold up? Is it appropriate? Is it problematic? I love this conversation that we have. This conversation, this comic book shop style conversation. You know, and just, this is great. YouTube's a great place to have this, uh, to have these conversations. Social media is okay. There's a lot of polarity, a lot of outrages, a lot of, you know, this, this illusion of two tribes. I don't buy into that. But what I do buy is things at my local comic book shop and the the experience that I get there weekly talking to other comic book geeks and seeing what they're buying and you know have, uh, seeing other people who aren't like me and who probably don't you know feel like me or identify with me that's okay. It's good to see this 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 community it's a real social feeling the local comic book shop so on wednesday i i love to go there and just peruse literally peruse the new release shelf i get up close and i know i miss something so i always step back to the other side of the store and look at it from afar and i read like, oh look how did i miss that <clears throat> like i Amazing Spider-Man 27 was already sold out. I would have, I already told myself, I would have at least thumbed through it, looked at the Ed Beginnis art, um, find out if Kamala Khan was actually a scroll. <laughs> I was waiting for that shoe to drop. It could have happened. Come on, this is comic books. Uh, Chicanery is not below <laughs> the producers of this fine art. You know, um, but no, I did not see Amazing Spider-Man 27 up close or far away. It was sold out on new release Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern. The store opened at 11. They've been open for three and a half hours. Now, 
it's it's not I'm not a, I would never accuse the store of not getting enough. You know, they got plenty of other titles that I know could be associated with returnability. I see that. I've seen them there for for 3 weeks now, 4 weeks now. I wish I could help and buy buy them, you know, but I got my reasons. But it's 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 glaring. I mean, you know, <clears throat> like okay, there's a stack of 10 City Boys. There's a stack of six Spirit World number ones, and then there's another twelve number twos on top of it. But that's okay because they might have, they probably moved maybe ten issues number one. And, you know, and I'm not picking on my store. I'm not even getting into how they order or anything. I'm just, I'm just noticing as their customer. I'm their weekly customer, so they kind of like. Who knows what's on their shelves? The bosses, the staff, and the the, the, the weekly customers. Yeah, I know it's, you know, I, I know what to look for and where to look for it, you know. And um, and I know what was there last week, too. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's, but it's a great experience. And while I'm there, I guess since I'm reboarding, reboxing, and rebagging my entire collection, I'm getting my supplies there, my boxes. I don't want to knock everything over or my pot of coffee, my bags, my acid-free boards. And I'm getting them all at my local comic book shop. I could be getting them at my big box stores or my local supply chain, but I'm not. I'm agreeing to pay the up, uh, the retail uh, markup because it helps keep my local, lo my local comic book shop open. And it's, it's a local business. It's a mom-and-pop shop. It's... Um, it's family owned, you know. Somebody owns that. Somebody's there are people that aren't a corporation um, with a stake in this, with this, their lease, their rent, or their real estate, to their inventory, to their books, to to their bills, and then their invoice stack, and keeping on top of that, to their line of credit with their bank, and to you know, there's just and. To support that, that that's just that could be any local store, and especially ones that made it through lockdown 2020. So if I have a choice, I'm going to spend my money first at a at a mom and pop shop, at a local store, and then at like at a chain store, because we do have like one legit chain of comic book shops here in Massachusetts, New England Comics. I believe they are, they're down to five locations, five stores. Quincy, Brighton, Malden. Um, I'd have to look up the other two. They're probably, I think, Brockton and maybe somewhere in North Shore. But um, they used to have more locations. And I've seen two of them close. I saw one of them. One of them was legitimately my go-to comic book shop for a decade. Yeah, and they're, they closed. New England Comics and Harvard Square. So, what do we do? Well, we, we carry forth, and we go on, and one foot ahead of the other, and keep showing up to our local comic book shop on Wednesdays. Talk to people. Buy your supplies there. And it's fun. And, uh, and it's, yeah, it's new release Sunday. So, we, yeah, we usually board bag and, and uh, box uh, old funny books and go down memory lane. And we look at advertisements, something that's really lacking in modern comic books. Is what lame advertisements and stuff. We have been talking about Green Lantern, all right? So we are covering, this week, is a new issue of Green Lantern. And uh, it's an ongoing, and it just restarted. And, uh, well, let's get to it. Why don't we? <clears throat> what? Look at the show... Look at the show notes, please. Okay. Uh, anything I missed? Let's see. Um, I don't know. Well, August 24th? That's that's, that's, that's a while away. And um, let's see. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. We missed. We're sorry to say that we think that Tank Top Saturdays might be moving to Tuesdays. <clears throat> Tank Top Tuesdays instead because of um, Pika likes the alliteration, it's more like 
like like a mighty Marvel magazine. You know that Marvel sense of alliteration. You, Pico, I think Pico wants Tank Top Tuesdays. We're gonna see about what we can do about that. Yeah, I just I, I really thought that you know Tank Top Saturday would just bring in, you know, it would be like the milkshake, bring in the girls to the yard, and I could teach you, but I'd have to charge, you know. But yeah, Tank Top Saturday was just yeah, it didn't work. It didn't you know sometimes. You gotta come up with new shit, and sometimes it doesn't stick, and you gotta be like, okay, well, let's just keep, just keep serving up the hash, and let's keep it going. Yeah, Green Lantern. Yeah, I love Green Lantern. If you've been tuning in, you can tell how much I love Green Lantern. We are like knee deep in a Green Lantern conversation, and we'll have some of that here today as well. So I I'm looking forward to that. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? <clears throat> the ubiquitous brown paper flat. The ubiquitous brown paper flat. I had a hiccup, like right there, landing th that that sentence. It ha it happens. You just gotta roll with things. But yeah, we have we got seven comic books on Wednesday. Five of them are new releases. Two of them are classics and as we mentioned yesterday if you were here yesterday i mentioned grading and worth we use these two books here uh the overstreet guides the guide to grading comics which shows you the 10 point scale on uh on dings all these dings add up you have a 10 is your perfect you have all these dings they take away from the 10 descending down to zero and or, or, or incomplete and in the middle run a huge gamut of condition of comic books and so it points out things to look for in a comic book in that 10 point scale all right and um like here here are the criteria yeah, that would be a very fine 7.5. Okay. And uh, that would be like the 8.0, the very fine, just a little better. So the very fine minus the, the first one. But yeah, but look, corner color chips. What is that? Minor fat, minor fat, minor foxing? What's foxing? See, this is why I love this show and doing it. I gotta, I gotta look that up. Alrighty. What is in the bag? Let's find out. Dun, 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 dun. Seven funny books this week. We are leading off, we was as we like to say, worst stuff first. And let me say by saying worst uh, when it comes to this specific magazine, I'm, I'm being light with it. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying like out of the seven, or out of the five new releases I got this week, this is um, a little disappointing, I guess. Well, it's Spider-Man India, issue number one. Let's uh, we gotta go to the wiki real quick. Spider-Man India, yeah, there you go. You looked at that the other day, fool. At the wiki, cause okay, um. Spider-Man India is a superhero comic book series originally published in India by Gotham Entertainment Group in 2004, retelling the story of Marvel Comics' Spider-Man in an Indian setting. It ran for four issues, which were later also published in the United States in 2005 and collected into a trade paperback. The series was created with Sharad uh, Devarajan, uh, Suresh um, Sitha Raman and Javan J. Kang with Mar Marvel Comics. And none of those people are on this comic book here. And um, the, the the title character, Pavitra Prabhakar, Peter Parker, uh, the alternate in his universe of his Spider-Man, uh, Pavitra Prabhakar, made his cinematic debut in the 2023 film 
Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1. He's voiced as he's voiced by Kari Sony and depicted as a member of Miguel O'Hara's Spider Society. He's um, it was a four issue miniseries that ran from 2004, November 2004, until February of 2005. I remember when this came out. I remember seeing it on the shelves at my local comic book shop at, at New England Comics, Harvard Square specifically, um, on the new release shelves. And uh, Pavatir Pravakar is a simple Indian boy from a remote village who moves to, um to Mumbai with his aunt Maya and his uncle Bhim to study. Getting uh, to study after getting half a scholarship, his parents died some years ago. Other at the new other students at the new school tease him and hit him for his studious nature and village background. I also heard too that ca uh, the Indian caste system comes into play too here because um, although post-colonial India I hear you know doesn't use the caste system but I mean it's their part of their culture and uh, so I, I guess like part of the sub story is that uh, uh, Pavatir is a of, 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 of a lesser caste than most of his classmates, or of an, an un, a, a, a lower class, yeah, and uh, and he's got an MJ, and um, and then c comes, you know, the usual alternates, and this one has to do with uh, an alternate of uh, Doctor Connors, Kurt Connors, alliteration. Anyone? Peter Parker, Kurt Connors. Kamala Khan, you know, you know, Reed Richards, you know, is about um, his version of the lizard. And so, but it's cute. It starts, it opens with, um, you know, the info dump page. And that's, yeah, well, let's, let's look at a comic. Let's look at a modern funny book. This cost $3.99. So this is a normal size comic book. What do we have for ads? We've got Guardians of the Galaxy. There's Marvel Age number 1000. Whatever that is. Um, Spider is another house head. Let's see. Universal Studios for the hey, look at Marvel Land. So, yeah, here's uh, your info dump page. And it just starts with uh, Multiverse Antics. It starts off in Marvel six one six. That's the that's the 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 the. the look, we're talking over supper. Ha 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 ha! I know, but yeah, I mean, just like. Yep. Just all I see is digital assisted art, and cut and pasted on a monopea. It's. I am sorry. And then we go back, to Earth. 50101. That's that's um, pa uh, pa Pavatir's Earth, where he is the Spider Man. The only Spider Man. So he, you know. <laughs> yeah, and here's Pete and Aunt Maya, Aunt Maya, and then like him at school. And he's got an MJ too that he's like trying to, you know. You know, woo and be his friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I mean, Mumbai, what a huge city. Well, I mean, seriously, it's actually a really awesome idea to have... Mumbai needs his own Spider-Man. Detroit, Chicago, San Francisco definitely needs its own Spider-Man. I mean, just what about supply and demand? Well, seriously, I mean, Spider-Man India, it's cute. I'm glad I tried it, but it's just overall, it's weak sauce. When it comes to writing and art, I mean, at least we got a li some semblance of some cross hatching, you know what I mean? In 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 in, in a few of these faces, but for the most part, it's just like, is this, you know? I mean, you think you and your thing about digital art? Yeah, of course. I mean, just but this is also inked by Scott Hanna. All right, so we've got the uh, the writer. The the artist, 
I mean, the, 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 the penciler and the colorist is on here. But the inker isn't. The inker is Scott Hanna. And so that's why I'm like, I can see familiar, you know, I see familiar tones. I can see Scott Hanna's hand literally on these on these panels. Now, these panels are fine. I mean, this is, here we go. That's, that's some tr traditional Spider-Man storytelling, story beats. But it's, yeah, it, yeah, it's a miss for me. So we start, that's, um, that's that. We've got Don't Spit in the Wind, number three, from Mad Cave Studios. And this is how we find out when uh, when this is like, oh, really? To be concluded, next issue. So um, this will only last four issues. I love the design of this. I love the cover art. If the cover sold me on this, it was the font, it was the coloring, the nostalgic thing. There was like, there's a definite like 80s nostalgia in the font i mean as as composition and as publishing goes as graphic arts putting together a fetching magazine cover that will hopefully get the attention of someone that's going to spend 3.99 on so yeah this is the same price as a marvel magazine uh no ads because well at the end we have we have a preview page we've got um We've got a few preview pages at the end here for Under the Influence, which is a new another magazine of theirs. Um, and here's everything else. They, I want to pick up Dahlia in the Dark because Joe Corallo writes that. And I've been suggested Nottingham. So Matt, and I'm also reading um, Hunt, Kill, Repeat. And... Um, and I just got we got canceled as well, and so yeah, Mad Cave, Mad Cave, so far, is the strongest of the indies that I'm buying. There's Scout Comics I'm buying as well. Um, there's an occasional Vault comic out there that I will. So would Dark Horse is not an indie. Image is not an indie. Uh, IDW is not an indie. Boom Studios, I don't think so. I would. Would you consider Boom or Dynamite or Oni? Maybe. Then now we're starting to get, you know, but they have got so much, you know, there's, there's, I mean, like, licensed intellectual property stuff. But, I mean, when it comes to indie indies, like a true indie, I think Mad Cave is getting a lot of my money. I like that. So, yeah, make mine Mad Cave. Hmm. I saw this on Yule Carter's show, The Sickness, now, Chapter 1. This is from Uncivilized Comics. It's six dollars. No ads. No, no, no preview. Well, there's a. Well, to say there's no ads is a lie. That's, you know, the, that's the back page. Maple Terrace by Noah Van Skyver, issue two, coming out August 2023. Maybe I'll look for Maple Terrace number one and and two, and see what Ethan's little brother's up to. But I get this story is it's it's a little weird because uh, it's a horror story. And it's about, um, we don't know what it's about yet. The story's a bit confounding and confusing. Probably only to have everything be revealed in later chapters. So this is just the act one. I don't know how many issues this is planned. But let me tell you, I love the art in this. This is art by Jenna Cha. Story and script by Jenna Cha and Lonnie Nadler. And letters by Hassan Otsmani Allahu. It's published by Uncivilized Books. Here's your indie. See your call the phone, right there. This is indie, man. This is serious indie book. I, I'm I'm loving this, and um, I've read it three times just to get my head around story, which is a little confounding, sure. But if this is a horror story. But what? Let me. I love the art. I'm loving the art. This is all show don't tell. We're all setting up into something spooky. Um, and it's all pencil works. It's all hatching and cross hatching and shading. This is all of these images have some kind of visual tactility and in, in, in the visual shorthand that I'm used to seeing. So now it's is this just me who has to get used to the 21st century visual shorthands and developing shorthands of the of the digital, you know, medium and in way it's used or. 
am I just am I being picky? I, I, I it could be either. I mean, and it's those could be the you know the ends of the spectrum, and everything else in between. But it's got you know, it's, it's moody. And the town has a noir quality, meaning like noir when noir uses its city and backdrop as a character itself. But it changes location and time. So it, we, we start in 1945 in Stillwater, Minnesota, and the rest of the book takes place in 1955 in Lakewood, Colorado. So with this, with with some of the, the same characters crossing over, there's a there's a murder mystery. And, um, but it's, like I said, it's confusing. The story is just a little disjointed. It, nothing's, it's not satisfying. And I don't think it's meant to be. And it just, it was, it was a real read. Because, like, look, look at these bubbles. Like, there's a lot of story going on. But are, what are they talking about, really? It, it, for me, this is like a Stephen King horror story. And so I, I can, I can follow because it just, it has all the charm, horror, and story beats of, of a Stephen King short story. and uh, But I'm just loving this traditional black and white pencils. And it um, it just, I can really hold, I, I, that, that's an art I can really appreciate. And, uh, and there's some really horrific stuff in here. But, I mean, you have, pan these panels look like, they, are they from the 19... 45 I mean is 1955 looking into 1940 I have no idea I'm confused but I like the art and I might be back for issue two that you know like I said the art is really solid in this it's not the best art I'm not saying it's like you know oh wow I'm just more of like I'm appreciating very appreciated of the non-digital art here we have Clobber in Time, number four, which also, here we, how do we find out? Well, to be concluded, that means it's going to be a five-issue mini. Well, maybe they can get more out of it. You never know. That could be just the conclusion of this story. Hopefully, it will go on. Um, this is great. Written and drawn by Steve Scrochi, and it's just fun. It's a Marvel team-up of Thing and a character, and it's fun. And it's well written. The voices of these characters are there. The art is spectacular. It's horrific and grotesque to, uh, for exaggeration. And look at that. Honest to goodness on a monopeia. We were like, and look, other stuff, it looks like it's drawn, it's just cut and paste and dropped in there from a meme generator. And then you have like authentic looking. Onomatopoeia. It just, it's, it's, it, I don't know. It goes a long way with me. I mean, we, we are like, he, like you're selling something that's supposed to be some kind of top quality product. This is supposed to be the top of the shelf. You know, the, the, the best of the best should be writing for Marvel and DC. But they take all these shortcuts and I guess, like, the younger the artist is, the less reliant they are on their skill set and very reliant upon the uh, the filters, kits, shadowing kits, and coloring kits involved in their, um, in the coloring palette as well. I mean, just, just, uh, I, and, and here, let's look at some, uh, some ads. We got the, we got, we've seen these ads. It's this week's Marvel comic books. What do we got for this week's ads? There we go. There you go. There is, there is your info dump page. <laughs> but this is fun. I'm liking it, and uh, yeah, and like, oh yeah, look, Hellfire Gala, come and, come and, come and consume event. I mean, that just won't matter, or maybe it w who knows. And look, more. Who is this being marketed to? Strictly other comic book readers. Um, that's it's. There are no advertisements. Look at this on on a pay. Look at that. Look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like those do not. Those are not cut and pasted. And he's stuck with Victor Von Doom for several weeks. And Victor's not. Victor says there's no way to get you a burger, Ben. You have to eat this. And then, look at that. Oh, 
What the? Dr. Doom, you are an evil son of a... All he wanted, he's been there for, for weeks. He wanted a burger. And Victor's been feeding him, like, like, like... <laughs> Vap Chi Chi. <laughs> this is funny. This is a fun comic book. All right, we've got Dawn of DC, Green Lantern number two. All righty. By Jeremy Adams. If you add, this is four ninety nine, because it has a backup feature, and which I mean, I'm, the backup feature looks great, but I'm really not like happy with it. I'm like, I, this is gonna go into a different story. This is Rise of the Revenant Queen, and um, it's from a different, an alternate universe. I don't know even how to just describe it anymore this is like multiverse gone crazy but john stewart returning to the universe that he was made for him in the dark crisis his his idea you know and the green lantern universe and he's now back this is all conclusive this is continued in green lantern 3 on sale in sep september not cover date in september on sale in september okay big difference and we don't even they don't even cover date these anymore. I, I bet you I'm gonna figure out where the date is in, in the in the um maybe I'll ask Yule. He'll know. Get that. It's somewhere in the UPC sig uh sign here. What the heck? Focus. Gosh darn it! You cameraman, get to work. Somewhere in this UPC symbol is the date. I see a 23. <laughs> is that an 8? I have no idea, dude. But yeah, okay, look. Night Terrors. One bad day on a two-pager. We have Unlock the Multiverse. You know what I mean? In the inside ad, we have Flash, the movie, which I heard is terrible. Ugh. Look, AEW at least. Okay, here's one. You know, is it related somehow? Turner Broadcast, owned by WB or something? Look, hey, another Flash ad. Get up to speed with. Wow, Flashpoint, but not Flash Rebirth. Mm. Wow. I wonder why. But look, using Earth Zero, let me see on Earth Zero, that's good to know for me, like no trying to figure out what Earth they're on, but this is like another universe, another time. That I believe that's the John Stewart made universe from Dark Crisis. And Guy Gardner may have been killed there. And also there's an info dub page here I wanted to bring up yesterday. So here, here's the, the Here's the memo page. Here's our Robert. Here's our our, our Jonathan Hickman type memo page. This is a memorandum for the United Planets who are now overseeing the galaxy, the, the you know, and the, the Green Lantern Corps. Earth is six in, se sector two one eight four. It's been uh is, is a quarantine zone, and um, including Earth, and so. Sinestro is, is is missing in action. Location unknown. Hal Jordan status inactive, and is an energy source det detected. He had his ring taken away from him. Um, then there's redacted, deceased. Former Lantern Jordan filed report. John John Stewart location unknown. Advise. So he could be in his own universe. You know, Kyle Rayner redacted slash field port. All other two one eight four lanterns reassigned. That means Simon Boz. Jessica Cruz and Sojourner Mullen, another known as Joe or Jojo Mullen. And um, who is redacted? Well, who the hell could else it could it be? It's Guy Gardner. That's the glaring omission from this list. And why is he deceased? Well, it could be because he was a version of him was killed in, in issue one's backup feature, a Guy Gardner from that universe. And Rise of the Revenant Queen, number part one, by Philip Kennedy Johnson, art by Montas. There was a Guy Gardner killed there. But 
specifically it's more of the uh, <clears throat> I think it's the Tom King black label human target feature which had um, of which Guy Gardner gets killed by his ex-girlfriend ice gets turned into ice and then shattered and then you know exactly I mean I have got so many questions but actually it's a Tom King book so I don't care but uh, but yeah, we've been talking about Green Lantern all week. So here's a new number two. And what happened? Well, Hal Jordan's been on Earth and he's down on his luck. Of course, he needs to hit Carol Ferris up for a job again, and he wants to schmooze back in on her. She's got a boyfriend. So somebody sold a Manhunter, uh, an old Manhunter robot, as a, a suit of armor on the black market. This guy bought it and tried to be in a super super villain. Hal Jordan it was it was was there, and apparently, he uh, was able to use his willpower. To form a new ring out of the latent Green Lantern Green Lantern energy in that Manhunter, um, ar uh, you know, metal and armor that Manhunter robot that's being used as a as someone's armor, he was able to uh, to form a new ring out of that. So it so does it possess the qualities that his old ring had, like the Silver Age, um, you know, protects the wearer from uh, from mortal injury. I've seen that used. Um, it does it have the ability to reproduce, like make another ring. I've seen that used in Hal's old ring. So uh, pretty decent art, though. I mean, yeah. <laughs> This was pretty fun, so I'm in for in for the win for this, and um, two old comics too. Of course, you know I'm a sucker for the for the Marvel 1981 late 1981 books that have the Columbia 10 speed racer bike contest. So we've got um, I got this for for ten dollars. It's in de really decent condition. I got this for eight dollars, but like this is what I'm talking about. About negotiating. See, I looked it up, and both of these comic books go for ten dollars at near mint at a nine point two. Now, when we're looking at dings, we gotta count them and stuff, you know. And those deduct from um, your overall because look at up here. So, see those prices? They correlate with with that. So that's a that's how much it would be at nine point two, a nine point zero. An 8.0, and that's the descending value. You know what I mean? And that's how, you know, we, this is how we grade comic books, and this is how we value them as well. So this comic book here, oh, gee. Damn. Con, the computers are smashed. We need time. This would go for $10 at a near mint. 9.2. It would go for $8 at a very fine near mint of 9.0. And now I'm thinking this comic book is not a 9.0. And I should have taken it out of the sleeve to inspect it. And I'm going to show you two glaring dings. And then we got to wrap the show up. You can see that from here. Look at that. We got stain. We got a huge corner stain from here all the way up. Uh, but besides that, no corner roll. I mean, no corners are tight. You know, no spine roll. Just that weird stain and discoloring. Um, you know, but here, literally here, you see those two little. Okay, you see that? That's a foreign thing. Can you hear that? I mean, that, that that's like, it, it's like resin, or it's like. Or, or something, it's coming off, kind of, but it's also smearing. I really don't want to mess with it. It's kind of, it feels sticky like resin or tar, but though that's a ding. Of course it is. So I got, I've counted two dings. So does it, did I overpay for this funny book? Maybe, maybe. See a little bit of that stain. You can see a little bit of that stain too here. Yeah, huh? Did I overpay for this comic book? I did. I think I did. Should I have haggled a bit? I should have. I should have. 
Do I need to wrap up this episode? I do. I do. You need to get back to your day as well. We do. We do. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. It's new release Sunday. Where does this go? I just like, I never mean for it to go on this long. I just start blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Ramble on. That's right. Here are our new releases this week. And um, pick of the week. It's clobbering time. Yeah, loving it. And uh, I hope it, I hope there's more after this. And there'll be more about this tomorrow. Please like and subscribe. We'd love to earn your subscription. We make daily content here. Uh, we talk about comic books every day, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Join us. Click on those notifications. Like this video. And we will see you tomorrow in those funny pages. Cheers. Bye-bye.